so welcome to my dear learners so today uh, we are going to discuss in details about the audiometry um, and uh, that means uh, this audiometry will indicate the degree of hearing loss okay is there any problem in the ear or not so first we will see how we are recognizing a sound so this is the you know this is the air anatomy so this is the air anatomy and we are not going in depth of the air, uh, depth of the air anatomy we will just understand because our main topic is to read the audiometry report so you see this blue part this part up to this it is called uh, external air that means it is mainly it is the air canal then this green part mainly this green and the red part the green and the red part this is called the middle air which is consisted of the air drum and uh, this auditory ossicles so up to this this is the middle layer this is the middle layer and next this cochlea this uh, yellow color and the purple color this cochlea and the purple color that is nerve which is called auditory nerve so this part is called the inner air this part is called the inner air so normally the sound which is coming in the air canal and you know normally when the sound is created basically it's a frequency the frequency of the sound indicates the pitch of the sound and the amplitude of the uh, sound wave will indicate the intensity intensity how loud it is normally it is measured in decibel so this will create some compression in the, the in the vibration in the uh, uh, air which is propagating through the air canal and it is creating some vibration in the air drum that vibration it will propagate that means that vibration we will further uh, this vibration will further propagate through the auditory ossicles and once this cochlea is vibrated so there only this mechanical vibration will be converted to electrical signal that means the trans transduction will be uh, taking place and then that electrical signal will it will uh, transmit it will propagate through the auditory nerve and it will go to hypothalamus and you will recognize that sound so this is a very uh, simple way to understand how our uh, we, we are how you are hearing a sound okay so so from this things we can understand if there is a, some hearing problem or hearing loss and if so up to this from here to here means when the sound wave is propagating through the air canal and then air drum and then auditory ossicles that is basically it's a mechanical propagation this is a propagating conducting the sound wave is getting conducted through the outer and the middle air so if there is some problem in the ex uh, external air means the outer air or and the middle air so that kind of hearing loss which will uh, reflect that is called conduction type hearing loss okay now if the uh, outer air and the middle air is working fine there is no problem it is fine uh, it is nicely the uh, sound is getting propagated to cochlea but if there is some problem in the inner air that means the either in the cochlea or the auditory nerve 
and it is not going to hypothalamus properly the electrical set the transduction transduction is either the trans transduction is not taking place properly or the auditory nerve nerve is not ca capable to take that electrical signal to hypothalamus to recognize it so there may be the problem in the inner ear which is called if the problem is there means in the inner ear so that kind of hearing loss is called sensory neural hearing loss okay so normally the hearing loss will be classified broadly into two that is outer when the outer and middle ear problem is concerned so that time whatever the hearing loss will reflect in the audiometry it is called conduction conduction type hearing loss and once there is some problem in the inner ear so whatever the problem it will reflect in the the hearing loss will reflect in the audiometry it is called sensory neural type hearing loss this hearing loss normally the degree of hearing loss we will uh, it has uh, we will understand the patient what is uh, what is the degree of uh, his hearing loss and mainly uh, so nowadays it will be used in medical legal case also say so there is some some people fight or there is some accident so what kind of hearing loss is occurred due to that and based on that the as per the ipc or um, say in the motor vehicle act the compensation it will be predicted so this there are several issues so normally in in uh, in audiometry we will use pure tone audiometry what is what do you mean by this pure tone audiometry pure tone audiometry means whatever the sound we are hearing so in that is a, uh, so many frequencies are mixed with that okay so uh, in pure tone audiometry we will generate a single uh, frequency uh, sound but we will change the in intensity as i told the pitch of the sound is dependent on the frequency say one female is speaking so his frequency is high pitch is high but uh, when a male is uh, speaking so his uh, frequency is less pitch is less okay and the intensity how loud it is so that is defined by the amplitude so to understand the hearing loss what will uh, this audiometric machine will generate a single frequency sound with different in intensity and we will uh, predict the hearing threshold means at for a particular frequency at what in intensity the what minimum intensity the patient can uh, hear the uh, sound okay so from there we will uh, measure the degree of hearing loss in and we know this uh, normally this uh, intensity of the sound is measured by decibel so this is the chart is uh, provided by who w uh, world health organization so if for a particular frequency if the patient can hear the sound of intensity between minus 10 to 15 db so that means his hearing is normal and if he can hear within 16 to 25 decibel sound that means there is a minimal degree of uh, hearing loss if it is 26 to 40 that is mild hearing loss if it is 41 to 50, uh, 55 that is uh, moderate and 56 to 70 it is moderately severe and 71 to 90 it is severe and above 91 it is profound degree of hearing loss okay so these are the when we will be reading a audiometry we will understand it it's a very simple thing you just if you use your simple brain you can understand it <coughs> so in audiometry there will be normally two graph one is air conduction graph and another is bone conduction graph why why it is required so here as i told the uh, the degree of the type of hearing loss it is broadly classified by two one is conduction type hearing loss 
another is sensory neural uh, type hearing loss or both so we have to isolate these two whether it is uh, conduction type or sensory neural type or both this is to be done how it is to be done so say some sound is generated uh, in the uh, outer air okay so that will be propagating so if there is a obst uh, there is obstruction in the air canal say there is some air wax or something some tumor or something growth this air canal aperture uh, got reduced okay so there will be a, the uh, increase of uh, uh, impedance to propagate the uh, sound wave okay so then there is a problem in the outer ear or say the there is some problem in the ear drum or the uh, auditory ossicles are not working properly so these are all these all the things will be uh, due to that uh, we will the, uh, the the patient will experience the conduction type hearing loss so how to isolate it so if we can generate the vibration which is directly propagating to the cochlea and we are bypassing this outer and inner air uh, sorry outer and middle air and if you are stimulating the cochlea and then if we are getting the normal means normal uh, mm, uh, audiometry graph then we can easily isolate that there is some problem in the mm, uh, uh, outer or middle layer so in this way we will isolate the problem okay now you can take another case say we are directly stimulating the cochlea and we are getting a graph so first we will discuss about a graph so in audiometric graph the x axis is the frequency and the y axis is the intensity of the sound okay so say uh, at 125 hertz at 125 hertz we are generating some tone we are generating from tone from some uh, low to we are going to high and we are asking the we are generating the sound and the patient is uh, uh, the, the head uh, uh, from the headphone the headphone is given to the patient he will hear that and whether he can hear the sound or not uh, there is a uh, another uh, push button will be there through that the patient will respond or they will raise the hand or finger yes i am hearing that sound like that way we will uh, mark that particular point say uh, 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 the doctor is generating the sound of 125 hertz from uh, 0 decibel to slightly slowly 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 he is mm, increasing the intensity okay so at what int intensity the patient is able to hear that point it will be marked so this is that point similarly for 25 hertz at what in intensity the patient is hearing so that point marking and joining this is the this is called the audiometry okay so what i was discussing so as i told so if if we are directly stimulating the cochlea okay and we are recording the audiometry that is called bone conduction audiometry okay that means we are using some vibrator here in the bone okay here in the bone you can see so this bone the back side of the air, a, a back side of the air that that bone is called mastoid bone so here we are using 
we are uh, putting some uh, vibrator and we are creating the vibration of the sound of desired frequency which is directly stimulating the uh, cochlea and the electrical signal is propagating through the auditory nerve and the patient will be hearing the noise so if we are uh, putting the if we are ki keeping the vibrator in the mastoid bone that time if you are uh, giving the uh, sound or uh, creating the vibration the outer and the inner air uh, outer and the middle air is bypassed okay so we can isolate it so this is not due to and in in bone conduction graph if you are getting uh, uh, degree of hearing loss is more then we can conclude that there is a uh, this is due to sensory neural loss okay and in air conduction when you are, we are talking about air conduction so that time normally through uh, headphone we are generating the sound and this is propagating through the outer and the uh, middle air and then finally going to the cochlea okay so hope i able to uh, make you understand that how to, how to isolate the conduction loss uh, conduction type uh, hearing loss and uh, sensory neural type hearing loss okay so normally to understand the sensory uh, neural type hearing loss uh, we will see the bone conduction graph okay and to understand the problem in the air canal this outer air and the middle air we will see the uh, air conduction type um, this air conduction graph in the audiometry okay so these are the symbol these are the standard symbol uh, yeah here one term is used masked and unmasked what is that so normally say sometime uh, if one ear we are generating some sound due to some reason <coughs> some leakage path or through some it is going to another ear so that another ear is to be masked so that time another sound continuous on sound it is given say some wind is blowing that sound is given to another ear okay another ear it is given and which ear is getting tested there is some particular tone is given so easily so the ear where the wind blowing sound is given that is masked even though there is some leakage path that ear will be uh, through that ear the patient will be not able to hear that so this is called the masking technique in bone conduction also because in bone conduction basically we are vibrating the uh, mastoid bone and through skull it may it may go to another ear so that uh, the so the ear which is uh, tested that ear only that uh, tra transducer it will be connected and another ear through headphone we will be giving some uh, other sound so wind as i told wind blowing or some music or something so that uh, even though uh, through other leakage path the sound is getting propagated in that air and uh, uh, but that through that air the patient will be not uh, the patient will not be able to recognize that sound that particular tone so this is called the masking okay so these are the uh, symbol so in right ear always the red color will be used and the uh, left ear blue color it will be used so this is the uh, standard symbol okay here an important thing we should remember which is called the air bone gap as i told the top one the top one is the bone conduction graph always you see the okay so 
what we, we were discussing that after seeing that uh, bone conduction graph and the air conduction graph how you will we will isolate that it is due to the outer and the middle air or it is due to only uh, inner air or both okay so how it is by using your simple uh, brain you can understand as i told earlier the the problem due to outer and the middle air is termed as conduction type hear, hearing loss and uh, the problem due to uh, inner ear is called sensory neural type hearing loss okay so now if you see this this is the bone conduction graph and you uh, definitely can remember that bone conduction it is we are bypassing the uh, outer and the middle layer and directly we are uh, stimulating cochlea and from there we are getting the graph and in air conduction graph all the part of the inner the outer air the middle air the inner air all are involved okay so if you see this graph bone conduction and the air conduction there is a gap this is called air bone graph a uh, gap so if this air bone gap is between 15 decibel that means there is no problem in the uh, outer and the middle ear okay you can simply interpret it that the uh, sound which is getting propagated through the inner and middle ear and it is going to inner ear and then it is going to hypothalamus in our brain so now if that this this uh, air conduction graph is somewhere here which is greater than 15 decibel that means that means there is there is some problem in the outer and the middle layer also okay so there is some there is some obstruction in the air canal or the or some problem in the middle ear okay so using simple your uh, uh, presence of mind you can understand where is the problem so now i am coming to one practical graph so this is one practical graph so this is this is for a patient who uh, <coughs> experienced with some accident and uh, after that accident he took the audiometry and this is the result so now if you see the left ear so the left ear for the this top one dot dot is the this dot dot is the bone conduction and this solid line it is the air conduction so you can see clearly that for the left ear it is all are within 25 till till 2000 hertz it is all within 25 decibel and after 2000 hertz this hearing loss is getting increased okay but in the right ear you see all are all are greater than 25 decibel so to predict the degree of hearing loss what we need to do we have to take the average of 500 1000 
and 2000 hertz we have to do the average so here in case of right here if you see the value is 50 this is 50 and this this degree of hearing loss calculation we have to consider the uh, air conduction graph you should remember and in 1k it is 60 and in 2k also 60 to 60 plus 60 120 plus 50 70 uh, 170 by 3 170 by 3 means 10 pacha ponero kuri tin choy atero 56.3 something something average is coming so now we will see the interpretation so you see the comments are in the left here the normal hearing sensitivity with mild high frequency sloping you see as I told till 2000 Hertz there will be all the values are within within 25 this range so which is called uh, up to 25 it is normal or minimal but after 2000 Hertz there will be some slope means your degree of hearing is increased so in the left ear normally it is the hearing is uh, the hearing sensitivity is normal but at high frequency the mm, loss is getting increased so that's why it is written the normal hearing sensitivity with mild high frequency sloping okay but in the right here you see what is written so the average we got how much in the previous one it is uh, 56.3 so 56.3 means it is in this category so that's why it is written you see it is moderately severe so moderately severe sensory neural hearing loss okay why it is only sensory hearing uh, sorry uh, it is why it is uh, only sensory neural because you see the bone conduction also the the, the gap between that the airborne gap it is I think always it is maintaining within 5 decibel okay so this is not happening due to conduction there is no conduction problem there is no conduction hearing loss that much but if it is if these things this graph is somewhere here that means it is mixed of both okay so hope the explanation is clear to you and I am able to explain how to uh, read the audiometry so you can my contact details are given you can uh, ask me in case of any problem thank you so much